All right, guys, it is time to discuss some tip videos. I haven't done one in quite some time, and it was kind of like the foundation of my channel for the last, like, two, three years. Uh, but this game, I really got away from it, and uh, that's enough of that. So today's video, I'm going to show you guys what to be doing in terms of offense and things that you need to be looking for. And this isn't going to be uh, the blankets, you know, do this short side wrister or, you know, all that kind of stuff. I want to teach you guys some plays and whatnot you can actually look for. Now, I think that the best way to show you guys how to improve your offense is just you know specific shots i think it's more about how to set these things up and teaching you guys some uh, plays and whatnot which i think will make you better overall and uh yeah so let's jump into it this is how to suck less at offense i'm just kidding this is just how to score goals in nhl 20 all right guys so first things first uh we should discuss the strategies i use um the thing I need to say about strategies is they should change every single game. There is not a strategy set that is blanket and the best overall. Um, I can use a million guys as an example. Some of my closest friends are the best players in the world. I'll take Regs, for example. He literally uses default settings. Whatever the game spawns him in with, that's what he uses. Whereas other players like HK or OFS Hockey Kings uses Crash the Net. Where Regs will use behind the net, uh, you know, John Wayne and, and Josh Fearless use overload, things like that. So it, it'll change no matter what. It's how comfortable you are with each one. And I can't really give you an overall setting that is going to be better than every single one. But what I can do is teach you what some of these settings do and uh, see if they can't kind of coincide with the things that you do well in the game. So I start every single game with the most passive settings you can. The reason for it is because I don't want to be giving up things immediately. I think I you want to feel out. Your your opponent what they're see what they're using and things like that so for the four check i use one two two passive what the one two two passive does as far as an actual strategy it isn't just a full-on collapse the one two two passive is what you want to use if someone is forcing passes out of the offense or defensive zone so if you see someone who's constantly holding the backhand or the forehand and then forcing a pass up the ice if you're using the 1-2-2 passive, you're basically selling out for the pass. It's going to cause a ton of turnovers and whatnot. Now, if you're playing someone who carries the puck out, you're basically giving them a free rush up the ice. So keep that in mind. However, it keeps your guys so far back that you can adjust if it is someone who likes to just carry the puck up the ice. The neutral zone 1-4, this is how your guys line up in the neutral zone. So obviously the 1-4 has been the most popular strategy for I don't know how long. Um, it basically means that you'll have one guy in the middle of the ice in the neutral zone at essentially the faceoff dot. Uh, and then four guys along your blue line. And again, the the objective here is to try to deny zone entry by having everyone collapse back and, you know, have a lot of, again, just collisions at the line. Offensive pressure. This is going to determine how much your defense will go up the ice as you're rushing up with the puck. Uh, I always keep this low no matter what because this is this stat or this strategy more than any will cause a ton of two-on-ones because your defense are caught flat-footed always rushing up the ice regardless of the position they're in. I always keep this low. Defensive pressure. This is, um, this is the only meta thing in NHL 20. The meta for this game is collapsing protect net. The reason for it is the second you get caught chasing one-timers uh, more than any other year, this is the most overused strategy for scoring goals in this game. And the way that you stop that is protect net and collapsing. You're basically just trying to clog the the, the front of your net. Uh, you're trying not to get. You're trying not to chase and things like that. Now, people that are using that, there are very very effective ways to beat this strategy, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. Uh, defensive strategy collapsing it means that um, in the defensive zone your guys will collapse back into the neutral or into the front of the front of the net um, the only time that you want to use tight point is if someone is specifically just using point shots so my boy junior pens if you don't know who he is he is someone that uses point shots more than probably anyone in the game if someone is just using point shots against you then you need to use tight point. Other than that, please keep it on collapsing because what will happen is if you are playing someone who is very, very good at possessing the puck and circling around in the corners, if you the second you go to tight point, it leaves the middle open and that one timer is going to be open more often than not. So just this strat, more than any, don't change. Collapsing is the play. And I'm going to get into everything else after that. These I don't really want to get into. I'll probably get into in a different video. But the most important part of this video, as it is how to score, is the offensive line strategies. Now, I've tried every single one this year, and they all have their moments. The one I will say that is the least effective this year is the overload, which is stunning because 
that has been the go-to strategy for the last decade, probably more. Um, if you don't know what the overload is, you're basically having three um, three forwards along the boards on either side, and basically you're trying to rotate up those boards, up the one side of the boards for an open one-timer in the middle. Now, because everyone's using collapsing protect net, that just isn't open. So you'll see very, very few top-end players or players overall that still use this strategy. I'm sure there are people that are effective at it. Josh Fearless, one of the top four players in the world, still uses this strategy. But for anyone else that you know is still trying to use it, you you know you maybe you're picking up the game for the first time. This is not the strategy to use in this game. The two that you are going to slip between are Crash the Net and Behind the Net, and they each have their uses. And I'm going to get into that and what ones I think that you should use and show you guys the strategies that I think that are best while using these. So we are going to start with behind the net today. It is no bar none the most effective strategy in this game for NHL 20, and I'm going to show you how to use it effectively and help you get some more goals. All right, so this is what we're looking for. Someone who is using collapsing protect net, only pressuring with one player, usually the user control player behind the net. When you use behind the net, you want to cycle back and forth between the two players or two, you know, AI guys that are down behind the goal line. What's going to happen is you're eventually going to get the third guy, usually the centerman, to rotate in front of the net for an easy tap-in, like what happens here is a simple rotate out in front, leaves him wide open, and it's an easy goal. This is the most basic behind-the-net play that you can do, and it's something that is should be your main focus when setting up using the behind-the-net strategy. Now, those are really the basics of behind the net, but what I want to show you guys is how effective behind the net is on the rush, and you're going to see it in a few plays right here, because what will end up happening is the winger will stop up for a one-timer on the rush no matter what, and it's something that you need to focus on. So on this first play, you're going to see this is when all three players, all three forwards are rushing up the ice. It's an easy, especially with your centerman, because you're going to have two options, and because your players are opposite-handed, it's easy for a one-timer. But this, more than any other scenario, is why behind the net is so effective. Notice in this scenario, again, the defense that the opponent is using is collapsing protect net. He is allowing you into the zone, and watch what happens here. I carry the puck up with my forward, drop it back to my defenseman, cut into the middle, and it drags the guy to try and block the short side wrister, leaving your backside winger wide open for a one-timer. You guys would be stunned how many times that this play will win you games because people are so ingrained with following the short side wrister that they're going to leave this wide open. And the reason why it's so effective in NHL 20 is because everyone is using collapsing protect net. Here's another example of what you should be looking for uh, on the rush or right before you set up the cycle when you know, you've know you got some time and space. What you want to do is make sure that your opponent is controlling their defenseman. And when they control that backside defenseman so the guy that you know you're going to pass the puck back to that's when you really have it set up well because again that means they're following the puck and not the play so what you're going to want to do is just reverse and wait for that back door to open up and it's going to happen more often than not especially you know as you get better this is, again is for the more average players um, as you go up obviously play people can read those backdoor passes really well but in the instance of just trying to get better and climbing up, you know, the rivals' ranks and whatnot, that backdoor play is going to be open more often than not with the behind-the-net strategy. And again, guys, because of the new forehand shot animations in NHL 20, this doesn't have to be done on the, you know, opposite hand one-timer. This can be done on the forehand, and again, as you're rushing up the ice or behind the net, it will make your wingers go to that kind of triangle-style offense where the center is kind of the third man, the, the bottom point, with the wingers on the left and right to make that triangle in front of the net. And all it does is take the quick pass. And, you know, on Hut, it's always going to be easier if you have better players. Uh, but this works more often than not, again, just with those quick pass one-timers, um, even on the forehand in NHL 20. And again, just to drill this into your guy's head, behind the net, super effective on the rush. This is the best way to do it. And again, you're just trying to weave back and forth to make sure your winger opens up. Never kind of commit to one side and drag all the way to one side. It's kind of how you break up using this strategy effectively. You want to stay in the middle of your two wingers right here. Again, it's just forehand. It's not, it's not difficult, guys. It's real quick passes in front of the net off the rush. The last play I want to show you with behind the net is when you're cycling into the zone and you get into one corner. What you want to notice here is your center will go to the left or right boards. What it will do is it will then make a beeline right to the center of the ice once you've kind of sat there for just a little bit. This is the play that you want to set up when someone is pressuring you with their manual defense, okay? Because that means that that, you know, that streaking center is just going to have a beeline right in front. And again, it's just super easy, guys. 
So guys, those are my behind the net strategies. Let me know if you know they help, if you implement them. I hope this is going to kind of give you guys some more you know, instincts when it comes to actually using offense instead of just trying to go for the same shot over and over again. But let me know in the comments section down below. And please subscribe if you haven't already for daily HUD content. And I'll see you guys next time.